doesn't say that. It's shall. But it doesn't. So if there's only five, you only have to have I don't know. Why don't they all flow in the public hearing session? It should be. <laughs> yeah, I think um, Danette can handle it. I'm going to call the Butte Silver Bow Council of Commissioners regular meeting for Wednesday, March 18th, 2020, to order. Can we have a roll call, please? We have eight present and four absent. And let the record show that Commissioners Fisher, Sorich, Anderson, and Fredrickson are excused this evening. Commissioner McDonough, would you lead us in the prayer and the pledge, please? Thank you. Now is the time for any public comment on any items on the consent agenda. Yes, if you would uh, come up to the microphone and right at the bottom there, there's a little button to push. Um, yeah. There you go. Oh, there. Okay, just state your name and address for the record. Please. Hi, I'm Angela Monahan, and I live in Ramsey um, on 200 Flint Creek Road, and I am agenda number 2020-118. It's number two on the agenda tonight. Um, I've applied for a class three kennel license, which everything looks to be in order and it will be approved. Um, but what I would like to say is that this kennel license is for having more than three dogs um, in a county area. I live on a large property with no neighbors, 360 acres on the county line. And I've had to have two home inspections, um, animal control and um, the, the housing code person, I've had to have, go through two inspections. They went through my entire house. I had pictures taken of my house, which was sent to even more departments for a $50 kennel license. And I'm thinking, why? <laughs> this seems completely unreasonable to me. Um, I can understand the, the city licensing and, and living in city limits, but not on the outer fringes of the county um, where we literally have no neighbors. Um, you know, having more than three dogs doesn't bother anyone. So um, I'm just offering a few protest comments that, you know, why is this necessary? Um, can we change it? So can we do anything at all? Um, I mean, I don't mind getting it, but I felt the invasion of privacy was ridiculous. I mean, just the paperwork and the having pictures taken and sent to other people besides the two that came out was just not okay. So I just wanted to offer a few protest comments and um, see if there's anything we can do to, to get it changed. So it's, that's it. Okay, well, thank you for your comments. <laughs> Are there any other public comments? Yes. Hello, Clark Grant, uh, 156 West Granite. And here on behalf of Carpenters Union Hall Incorporated, uh, commenting on its communication number one there, 2020-117. 
And um, the summary of the communication there is a slight mischaracterization of, um, of my communication to the council. I'm not seeking authorization to apply for this grant, but rather wanted to uh, use this public forum to help satisfy a requirement of this grant application, which Carpenters Union Hall Incorporated is asking the Montana Department of Commerce um, for money to help construct an elevator on the east wall of the Carpenters Hall just across the street here. And this is the Montana Historic Preservation Grant Program. Same program the Mother Load is asking for money for fire suppression system. And uh, as part of the grant application, each applicant is required to do an environmental review. And as part of that process, uh, they want for the public to be thoroughly informed of the project and uh, recommended that placing it on the agenda of a local government meeting would be a good avenue to do that. So um, included in my communication was a design drawing showing the proposed elevator design and also uh, our environmental review, which our determination was that we're exempt from an environmental impact statement or environmental assessment. But uh, if you would like to discuss it more or if you have any questions, I invite you to segregate this communication. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Any further uh, public comments on any item on the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none. Move on to the approval of the minutes of the March March fourth, twenty twenty regular meeting. Commissioner Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Chief Executive. At this time, I'll make a motion that we approve the March fourth regular meeting minutes. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to approve the March fourth, twenty twenty regular meeting minutes. Is there anything on the question? All those in, or is everyone, please vote. Anyone wishing to change their vote? Would clerk please record the vote? We have eight yay and zero nay. Okay, thank you. We do not have any items not addressed on the agenda this evening. Under the chief executive report, I'll just say that it's been a very busy week with the COVID-19 situation that's going on. It's uh, changing daily and we continue to meet with the health department for updates and um, we will be notifying the public as far as, you know, the closure of the restaurants and the bars and whether it's going to be extended. We'll try to get that notice out probably late tomorrow or early Friday at some point. And they're due to be closed through Monday or through to Monday morning. But um, it doesn't look like the situation has improved immensely. So we'll wait and see what the health department recommends, but we'll probably extend that a little bit more. Uh, the state keeps uh, sending out a lot of information about some rule changes and in order to help, we're, we're very concerned about the small businesses in Butte and what is going to happen with them. They've invested a lot of money in the stock for the St. Patrick's Day um, celebration that did not take place and they were not able to uh, sell any of their merchandise so they're left holding the bag. So. The state has uh, suspended the week waiting period for any of the employees that are no longer working because of the closures so that they're eligible for unemployment benefits without a waiting period. And if they, if you know of any people in that situation, if you would send them to the job service center so they can get registered for unemployment benefits, that would help. And on another issue related to that, through the Anaconda Arco Loan Fund, working with the BLDC, we're trying to we're coming up with a program that we will be able to offer the businesses that are affected the small businesses that are affected by the COVID-19 shutdown to offer them a zero percent interest loan for up to ten thousand uh, dollars it'll be a six-month loan and then after that time it's just to get them through this tough time and then they would start, if they don't have it paid back by that time, they would be paying 2% interest and that would all go back to pay back the Anaconda Arco Loan Fund. But uh, BLDC would be administering that program. There will be no uh, fees attached to it. So they're not making any money off of this and neither is Butte Silver Bow, but it's, um, it's a good goodwill gesture, if you will, on behalf of Butte Silver Bow. And, and uh, helping these businesses out because we surely don't want to lose any businesses because of this shutdown. So 
and hopefully the federal government will pass a spending bill later this week or early next week to supply more help for these businesses across the country that are really in dire straits because of the shutdown. So we'll continue to up you, update you on that. We'll hopefully have that uh, program ready to go so that they can get the money and put it to good use um, probably early <coughs> next week. So we'll be calling a special meeting. It may be Wednesday, but uh, before the regular or committee of the whole to approve that program. So we'll update you as we get more information on that. Uh, I think that's about all on that for right now, but the, as I said, the situation changes daily and the school district did notify me today that they're gonna start handing out free lunches for 18 and un under tomorrow. And along with that, and it'll just be a pickup and delivery, at, you know, they'll, they'll just, no delivery, but they'll pick it up at one of the schools. There's like five school sites that will be listed on their news release. But along with that, there will be a package breakfast for the next day because they do not want the younger kids that are missing out on meals to go without. So it's a good offering on the part of the school district. Under the chief executive's report on the Superfund, everything has been put on hold. We will, as soon as this uh, breaks and we get back to having regular meetings and we can get more than 10 people together in a group, uh, we'll continue those meetings. Uh, so we've canceled all of them until then. And We'll see how long this plays out, but uh, we will get back in order and everybody will be on track for uh, moving that CD forward. So section one, bid openings, public hearings and or presentations. We do have two public hearings. Do we have proof of publication? Mr. Chief Executive, we have proof of publication on both um, public hearings and both period be in order. Thank you. First uh, public hearings, communication number 2020-102, Karen Sullivan, Health Department Officer requesting Council of Commissioners to schedule a public hearing for March 18th, 2020, for the purpose of amending the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget to allow for increased expenditures of unanticipated revenue resulting from a grant, U.S. Food and Drug Administration Health Department budget, 1000.000.3311.21.000. Do we have a staff report? Ms. Gleason. Yes. Chief Executive Palmer, Commissioners, for the record, I'm Danette Gleason, the Finance and Budget Director. I'm here on behalf of Karen Sullivan tonight. Um, this grant is from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration in the amount of $10,150. Um, we applied for this grant to be used for programming and training for our sanitarians. Um, so that's the main focus of, the, of this grant. Um, some of them, the sanitarians are at entry level, and so they're moving up through their certification process. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the council for Ms. Gleason? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing and call for proponents. Are there any proponents? Any proponents? Third and final call for proponents. Seeing none, we'll call for opponents. Are there any opponents? Any opponents? Third and final call for opponents. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and move on to the second one. Communication 2020-103. Karen Sullivan, Health Department Officer, requesting Council of Commissioners to schedule a public hearing for March 18th, 2020, for the purpose of amending the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget to allow for increased expenditures <coughs> Excuse me. resulting from an MOU from community participants to attend the Disability Inclusion Health Community Summit training by the National Association of Chronic Disease Directors Developmentally Disabled Budget 2984.000.3311.17.000. Do we have a staff report? Ms. Gleason. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chief Executive Palmer, Commissioners, again, Danette Gleason, Finance and Budget Director, representing Karen Sullivan from the Health Department. This grant is for $4,150. It is from the National Association of Chronic Disease um, Disorder Directors and Development. It's for the Developmentally Disabled Program and for the Health Department Director to see, receive training. Um, originally, there was a summit plan that was almost a week-long summit going to be held in May. Um, that travel has been canceled um, due to the COVID-19. However, they're gonna participate in web-based training around that same time. 
Um, it has not been formally scheduled yet, but both the um, health director or her staff as well as um, Todd Hoare will be participating in that training. Um, we've been very fortunate as a community to receive this grant. There's very few communities, I think maybe three in the state of Montana that have been successful in receiving these grants for training. Um, Karen and Todd have been successful um, in three different grant cycles um, to get trained on this. Uh, they used their expertise when we were doing park upgrades um, at Stodden Park, even in the pool area, um, those type of elements, as well as a lot of the sidewalk programs that have been taking place around the community and the fixing of the curbs and trying to make it more walkability for everyone. Um, so I think we're very fortunate to be receiving these grants. Thank you. Are there any questions for Danette from the council? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing and call for proponents. Are there any proponents? Any proponents? Third and final call for proponents. Seeing none, we'll call for opponents. Are there any opponents? Any opponents? Third and final call for opponents. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Move into section two, consent agenda, A one through four and B one through 22. Are there any uh, segregations or friendly amendments? Commissioner Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Chief Executive. I'd like to segregate number one, 2020-117, and number 10, 2020-127. Okay. Any further segregations? Seeing none, we'll move for the approval of the consent agenda. Commissioner Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Chief Executive. I'll make a motion that we approve section two, the consent agenda, A, the community reports one through four, B, the communications one through 22, with the exclusion of number one, 20-117, and number 10, 20-127. Second. Okay, we have a motion approved and seconded, or made and seconded to uh, approve the consent agenda, A, one through four, and B, one through 22, exclusive of number one and number 10. Is there anything on the question? Will everyone please vote? Anyone wishing to change our vote? Will the clerk please record the vote? We have eight yay and zero nay. Motion carries. So we'll move on to B, communications number one. 2020-117 Clark Grant MH. PG, project manager, requesting Council of Commissioners authorization to apply for the Montana Historic Preservation Grant, MHPG program, through the Montana Department of Commerce. This grant would fund the construction of an exterior elevator on the east wall of the building, as well as several thrust buttresses to protect the structure in the event of an earthquake. Commissioner Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Chief Executive. Uh, Mr. Grant, we kind of missed the boat on this one, didn't we, on our caption? <laughs> Um, for that, I apologize. It's not very often that we have people that just want to put something on our agenda with us not taking action. So I, I do apologize. Um, just in light of that tonight, I think it would be more appropriate to make a motion that we note communication 2020-117 and place it on file rather than concur. So, so I'll second that. Okay. And Mr. Grant, I guess a question for you is will that meet the needs that you have to show? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> We have a motion made and seconded to uh, note communication 2020-117 and place it on file. Is there anything on the question? Will everyone please vote? Anyone wishing to change their vote? Will the clerk please record the vote? We have eight yay and zero nay. Motion carries. Next was number 10, communication 2020-127. John Morgan, chairman, requesting Council of Commissioners call for a public hearing to be held on Wednesday, April 1st, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. in Council Chambers to ask for public input regarding the details of the Butte Priority Soils Consent Decree. Commissioner Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Chief Executive. As everyone knows, since I've submitted this communication, uh, a few things have changed around our community and public hearings right now are kind of a little dicey to, to get through. Um, I was working with the, the county attorney and, and others at the courthouse to try to decide our, the best avenue for this communication, and we were thinking of postponing it for another date. Um, 
but we don't really know when this is going to be um, best utilized. So at this time, I, th I think from our standpoint, um, it would be best to just note this communication and place it on file. And then when we do decide to have a, another public hearing, I will just draft another letter and, and resubmit it. Um, I would like the public to, to note that if there is a, a, um, a comment that they would like to make um, and they're comfortable with it, just to email it to, I believe it's commissioners at bsb.mt.gov. Um, that would go to all of the commissioners, and I will ask our secretary, uh, Ms. Ms. Davies, to, uh, to print those off and keep them in a file so that we have them recorded. And that way we can maybe limit the amount of you know, people to people contact we have, but still allow people to provide comment. If, if they feel that that's appropriate, again, I would just request that they start emailing those to us and we will receive them at that point. Um, but again, at this time, I would just make a motion to note communication 2020-127 and place it on file. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to note communication 2020-127 and place it on file. Is there anything on the question? Will everyone please vote? Anyone wishing to change your vote? Will the clerk please record the vote? Is there are eight yay and zero nay. Motion carries. Okay, now we'll go to section three, ordinances and resolutions referred to judiciary. Number one, resolution number 2020-15. And then uh, count number, the council bill number one, 2020-2. And that's all we have. So is there any public comment on any public matter not on the agenda? Seeing none, under the calendar of other meetings and events, I just want to uh, ask people, they're going to change daily, <laughs> whether they're getting canceled or postponed and getting rescheduled. So they will be posted if they get rescheduled on the website. So make sure you just keep watching the website. And, for any notifications of uh, rescheduled meetings or uh. Commissioner Morgan. Mr. Chief Executive, just a quick point of order. It's been brought to my attention that communication number 16, 2020-133, Mark Neary, Public Works Director, requesting council the commissioners authorize the chief executive to enter into a contract with Great West Engineering for land, <coughs> landfill well development. If you look at the communication on that, it actually is a contract with Pioneer Technical Services, not Great West Engineering. So I don't know if that changes anything on that, but I would refer to the county attorney on that <coughs> question. Um, Mr. Chief Executive, Commissioner Morgan, I think you can make a motion to correct that and then go ahead and vote on <laughs> okay. we'll go back to number 16 communication number 2020-133 and probably uh, revote on this communication so commissioner morgan thank you mr chief executive i make a motion that we amend the caption on 2020-133 to reflect pioneer technical services instead of great west engineering and concur and place this communication on file second Okay. We have a motion made and seconded to change the caption or the, the company name on communication 2020-133 to Pioneer Technical. Is there anything on the question? Sorry, Mr. Chief Executive. The, the caption is what is incorrect. The letter is, is correct. Okay. Mr. Neary, would you like to clarify? <laughs> Just to make sure we don't vote something wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chief Executive. Commissioners, for the record, Mark Neary, Public Works Director. The, it is Pioneer Technical who we have the contract with, not Great West Engineering. The letter is right. The communication is wrong on the okay. agenda. Okay. It is Pioneer. Okay. Okay. Everyone understand what the uh, correction is? So on my, uh, on my, <coughs> pardon me, hold, hold on a second. Sorry, <laughs> very sorry. 
133 is Aqua Rover. So on mine, 133 is Great West Engineering. Oh, there. Um, and then on 134, we have with Great West. So on yours, it's backwards compared to everybody else's. Maybe mine is backwards. Maybe mine's wrong. I don't know. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Commissioner Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Chief Executive. I believe. Uh, the, the, one of the problems is, is in the subject line, it says council authority to enter into a contract with Great West Engineering for landfill well movement. But then in the body of the, of the letter, it says the public works department is requesting the council of commissioners authorization to enter into a contract with Pioneer Technical Services for engineering services needed. So there's, there's the snafu on it. But in regards to the number on the agenda, the communication number is 2020-133. So that's how I'll make that motion is just to amend mm -hmm. the communication caption for 2020-133 to reflect Pioneer Technical Services and to concur in place on file. Yeah. I think we're on the question. Yeah. Okay, does everyone understand that on com number 16, communication 2020-133, it would be a, a professional service agreement and attached proposal between Pioneer Technical Services and Butte Silver Bowl. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's. Uh, and the recommendation is to concur and place on file with that amendment. Mm -hmm. Everyone understand the For amendment? For landfill well movement? Oops. Yes. For the landfill well movement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything on the question? Sorry. All those in favor? Please vote. <laughs> Took the word right out of my mouth there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone wishing to change their vote? Will the clerk please record the vote? There are eight yay and zero nay. Motion carries. Okay. Now, Commissioner Morgan. I'll make a motion we adjourn. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. Anything on the question? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you.